Well, hello there, and welcome to day three of the Ashens Game Jam in association with Bossa Studios, and by in association with, I mean they did all the work. Now, we're going to start this one a bit differently with a salute to one of our fallen comrades. I present to you, Poking Fun. Hello! Anyway, we're here to talk about toys. Let's start with this jolly entity. This game, tragically, did not reach a playable state, and as such you can't download it and play it, because there is nothing to play. Did you miss the bit where I said it didn't reach a playable state? Anyway, it was a clever idea, it was using the whole Surgeon Simulator hands thing, but to recreate one of my reviews on the old brown sofa. And the idea was, you would open certain knockoff goods, and then have to fit them together. And, here's the clever thing, basically, I would only say something through recorded voice clips when you got something fitted together. So therefore, you were trying to avoid dead air, as shown at the bottom by the silence meter. It was very clever, but sadly did not reach the finishing line at the end of the 48-hour game jam. But I thought I'd better show it to you anyway, since we used some of the footage in the behind-the-scenes stuff earlier. Anyway, today's game is The Greatest Game Never Played. A very pretty game, as you can see, although very quiet. Now, the concept is that this is a very rare foreign game you've managed to get your hands on. The thing is, nobody seems to know how to play it, because the menus don't make any sense. And so, your quest begins to basically try and play the game. Okay, we've got three options. Top, middle and bottom. Uh, I'm going to go for top. No, cannot play without character. Select one to the west. I wonder if west means moving left, but that's not doing anything. Okay, what is the bottom one? Oh, thought it might be redefined controls. Nope, no game saved. One day. With an excellent false nose and moustache. You never know when they'll come in handy. Right, middle one. Ah, yes, here we are. Ah, right, binding for keys. There we are. Left, left. Right, right, there we are. Now we have full key binding. What are these modes? Okay, that sounds good. Bonus mode, can't complain at that. 3D, can't complain at that. Gotta love the uh, melancholy bridge figure there in the background. So pretty. Okay, right. Ah, the two blokes there are doing something else now. Somebody is smoking and coughing, while the other one is uh, attempting to rip his own hair out, by the looks of it, which is always fun. Right, oh. I summoned the ghost of Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> If you move down off the bottom, or try and move off the um, menu using the side keys, you now get a Brucey bonus. Fantastic. Right. Ah, there we are. That is the West thing. Mentioned earlier. I remember this now. Yep. You actually switch between monitors where it's playing on another computer as well with this uh, slightly darkly worrying screen. Select Twine Champion. Yes, good plan. We've got Charlie Chiggins, who looks a bit shifty. Jimmy Funbuckets. Now, there's a name to go to bed with. And Bertie of Bogworth, who, again, looks a bit miserable. I want Jimmy Funbuckets because it looks like he's got a watch. He does indeed have a watch. And there he is, checking the time. Yeah. Right, let's move back over. Now, can we... Oh, Bruce is seriously freaking me out there. Uh, right, can we go in... Oh, no. That's bit we've done that. Oh my god, what happened? One of the blokes got kicked off the bottom of the <laughs> cliff there, and now I've go attempting to go back to the bottom menu has caused this terrifying... Oh, terrifying... Oh, can I stop it when it's... Uh, hey! Got it about straight again. There we are. Well, I don't know what happened between the two guys there, but it hasn't ended well for one of them. Right, can we start? Here we go. Streaming light from mainframe. Always a good start. Unzipping. Yep. Inserting punctuation, re-zipping, connecting to a dodgy Korean-looking server, uploading HD content, mining the Bitcoin, oh, that'll come in handy, posting the Facebook, getting on with it, that's what we like, and soon this game will have loaded. Ah, oh, tape loading error. Found you, prime number, now we're talking. Oh, load abort. Oh, you've got to be kidding. You have got to, oh, yes, it is kidding. <laughs> I remember that now. Ah, oh, sentient entertained. Oh, crikey. And please help. Uh, d uh, uh, oh, oh. That looks unwell. And it's crashed to some kind of DOS prompt at the bottom. Enter command. Right. The basic DOS command for help is always help, and it says please help. So I'm guessing we should type in help. There we are. Command list. Help, story, brightness, octopussy, cool horse, our lord, and quit. I'm going to be typing a random thing and put my name in. Nothing happened. Command not recognise. Makes sense. Right, story. What is the story to this game? Once upon a time, there were a man and a woman called Peter and Paul. They were smoking and combing their hair, respectively, on the hill under a starlit sky. They felt tremendous love for all things, except each other. 
Paul had had enough and decided to give Pretty Petey the boot. That's clearly the story of the guys on the uh, title screen, isn't it? I'm with it. Right, uh, Oct I want to see what Octopussy is. Octopus oh, no, there's only one uh, S in it. Right, there we are. Ah, it's literally a cat stroker. <laughs> Octopus character. That makes sense, yep. I can remember Cool Horse. Who could forget Cool Horse there in the bottom right? I can barely see it. Can we turn the brightness up? Brightness. No, that just made a blue sun appear. Fair enough. Can't argue with that. And the other option we have is our Lord. Ooh, with a terrifying evil shadow. Can we brightness it back? Right. Helps if I spell it correctly. Brightness. Nope. Says you have it. But not a lot. Well, I suppose it's just left the thing there. Well, oh my goodness. And just leaving it naturally provides us with more information we need to see of our Lord and the slightly disturbing us. Oh, wait, I've forgotten the golden rule of Let's Plays. As soon as something even vaguely scary happens, you have to pretend to be terrified from it and have a little video feed of you in the bottom corner of the screen. Ah! There we are. Loads better. Right, um, rather than going into the quick thinks thing, I'm going to talk about this one a bit more. Obviously, to expand this, you would need a lot more content. That goes without saying. But also, um, I think this could go one of two ways. You could have it as is, with loads of this sort of crazy weird stuff going on, which is what I personally like. Or you could actually move it over to the concept of a haunted game. You know, Ben Drowned and all that sort of stuff, which seems popular at the moment. I like the idea that uh, there's just loads of secrets and crazy stuff to do, and there's all people on forums sharing the secrets and trying to work out how to get to the different endings. Maybe one of them involves playing the game. Nah. Quit. Thank you for playing. Hey, thank you for providing this service. And now, a hard-hitting interview with one of the people behind the game. So for Terrifying Menu Simulator, the greatest game never played, three important questions. The first, if it's made into a full game, how will you celebrate? How will I celebrate? Mm. Um, I don't know, I'd probably, uh, I'd probably po make a post on Facebook about it. That's Twitter. quite exciting. Maybe even Twitter. My God. Everyone, everyone will see. Really pushing the boat out of Twitter yeah. as well. <laughs> but if it isn't made into a game, how will you commiserate? Uh, probably whiskey. Yeah, that's a pretty good commiseration yeah. I always find, at the very least. And the final question, why should it be made into a full game? Because the, the general public will just marvel at the depths of surreality. Is that a word, surreality? Surreality is now. It is. I think it was before, actually, thinking okay, cool. about it. We'll get an etymologist on it, it'll be fine, don't worry.